Home slices, home fries, and homes of other varieties. So today's video is going to be a little bit different in the way that I will be talking about my experience with the real Annabelle doll and my trip to Gettysburg because they had the Seekers of the Supernatural Paracon and Tony Sparrow was there among so many other guests like Kelsey Davies, Chris Starr, and uh, some cool horror film actors and actresses. But yeah, um, there's a lot to talk about here. And so we're just gonna get started. So I'm going to start off with just the part where we're driving and we're crossing over the border into the Battlefield Gettysburg area of Pennsylvania. If you don't know anything about the Battle of Gettysburg, Google it because it's an important part of history. But so a lot of people died there. There's a lot of deaths. There's a lot of unmarked graves and marked graves. There's monuments everywhere. There's a lot of farm fields with monuments in them. But anyway, so we're driving, we cross over the border of that area and that's when yuckiness kind of like took over my stomach was killing me my head was killing me i really felt like i was coming down with the flu but because i'm clairsentient i'm very well aware that was not the case and it was because of the energy of the area so right off the bat i felt like crap now when we got into the vip party because i was surprised with tickets on the way there um, that yuckiness was amplified by 10 times, if not more. And it's obviously because of the occult items that Tony Sparrow brought there for the public to, you know, experience. And yeah, it didn't feel great. <laughs> now, obviously later I was able to kind of figure out a good way to protect myself astrally, so during the rest of the trip, it wasn't too bad. But Friday night, during the VIP party, with my first impression of it, I felt gross. Now, um, so we were able to look around at the occult objects, and I did get to see the real Annabelle doll, and they also had the movie prop next to her as well. Um, and believe it or not, and this, I believe, has to do with the way Annabelle is kept they have her sealed off they have her sealed pretty good in her case which prevents her from having a lot of interaction with the public now of course you're not going to go up to her and start disrespecting her that's just a bad idea but i'm just saying in general um she was pretty separated from everyone else's energies so, interestingly enough, I had more issues with everything else there, but that's because, again, they weren't secure like Annabelle was. There was a fire doll that was next to her. I don't know if I got a picture of it, but I saw that thing manifest. But for me, because I am also clairvoyant, no one else really saw it, other than Kelsey Davies, and apparently, um... We saw similar things. Now, Chas brought to my attention that she did do a video about it, but I never saw it. So I didn't even know she even had a video about it. So when I showed her the picture, and her, I mean, Kelsey, I went up to her in person. I was like, hey, this is when I saw when I went near Annabelle. I had no idea. I knew nothing about the fire doll. And she's like, oh my God, that's the fire doll entity. And I was like, the fire doll? Because 
you know, I was taking pictures. I wasn't really paying attention to the plaques with the items that they had. I was more focused on getting good photos. So I wasn't necessarily reading everything, which, but only because I figured when I got home, I could just go and look at the pictures and read the plaques then because it was very crowded and I didn't want to get in people's way. But so I didn't realize that that was associated with the fire doll and Kelsey did validate that for me and that was awesome. And I showed her my drawing and I'll show it up here. But out of everything there, that manifested more so. I didn't see the entity associated with Annabelle outright like I did with the other one, but I also wasn't looking either because sometimes when you look on purpose, you're met with not so fun things. And I honestly didn't want to F around and find out with the Annabelle doll or really anything. But like I said, the fire doll, even though I wasn't trying to look and see the entities associated with them, the fire doll just was like, boop, there I am. And so, yeah, I saw that entity. Um, the entity was a female. She looked like a burn victim. Um, she looked like an adult or closer to an adult. Her head was deformed. She had burns all over her body. Her skin was like black, like black from soot and smoke and creepy, as you can see in the drawing. But even though I saw that, it wasn't very like, I wouldn't say scary or extremely evil feeling or malevolent. I wasn't worried about that whatsoever with that entity, or I should say earthy. I think it's an earthy. I was more focused on, you know, looking around and seeing, I don't know, the types of energies that I could get without super like prying into the energy. Cause I didn't, again, I didn't want to feel like crap on the trip when I already felt like crap. And usually when I feel like crap because of paranormal things, I try to take a step back because that is a weakness that can be exploited. And I didn't want to be a victim. Now, strangely enough, even after looking at the items, during the VIP party, that wasn't even when most of the problems began. Most of the problems began when I went to bed that night in the hotel and had a really foobar astral realm experience. Now, there were people in there that I knew that I'm not going to say their names because of privacy re reasons. And also, if they ever saw this video, they'd be like, what the F? And maybe it's something they don't remember and it's disturbing or, you know, it's just disturbing and they don't want to talk about it because let me just tell you, it was rated R. It was gross. And I will just give the bare minimum description of what happened. But essentially, it starts off with me at a party and there's two well, technically three females there, three of them that I know. One's causing problems, um, and it wasn't somebody that was at the uh, convention initially at all, and then the other two were there. But so the one's causing problems, and as the one is causing problems, these entities start also causing problems, and from their energy signatures, they look like some of the entities associated with some of the haunted objects. Not all, but many of them. And so the two people that I know get captured and they are forced to do really screwed up things. And I have to essentially do a rescue mission and get them out of the really screwed up situation and what made it worse is they had them in like this room of, I don't know, all four walls were like this glass. So you can see into the rooms and they're doing fucked up things. And 
I have to go in and sneak in, but there's so many entities there that I couldn't just barge in. I had to wait and I needed help. So I got help from other high vibe beings like Archangel Michael and other angels to get them out of there. And if they ever watch this video and they're like, oh shit, please let me know. Like, if this resonates with you guys, because I'm not mentioning your names, DM me because you don't need to put it out here publicly. DM me because I'm curious to know if you remember. But if you don't, that's all good too. Anyway, back to the story. So we were able to rescue them. And of course, they're all discombobulated as I would expect. And they're like, what the F just happened? And the thing is, you can have many people that do investigations that are mediums and all that stuff. And they're used to paranormal things outright in the earth realm where you and I are currently, right? But when things happen on the astral realm, it's a different animal because the things you think you can do on the astral realm, let's just say the astral realm, anything can go. And so it's a playground for negative things. But if you know how to navigate it, it can also become your playground in a way, but you gotta make sure you're safe and you have very good protective procedures because again, you can get yourself into trouble. But so you can be experienced on the Earth 3D realm, but that doesn't mean you will be on the astro realm. That takes a lot of practice. And I've had quite a few years of practice because part of my clairvoyant abilities is traveling the astral realm and receiving information that way. And I made it a habit to train essentially on the astral realm because it's because it's one of the main ways I receive information. It's another way for entities to attack me because that's, it's like a double-edged sword, really. It can be a strength, but it can also be a weakness at the same time. Because again, how I receive information is how things are going to attack me because that's most effective. So yeah, that's why I made it a habit to practice and make sure I knew what I'm doing on the astral realm or astral realms, because it's comprised of multiple realms. And I talk about it in multiple videos and you can go watch those. But yeah, just because you are experienced on the 3D with your abilities or just paranormal investigating doesn't mean you are on the astral realm. And these people were not very experienced on the astral realm which is why they needed rescued in the first place. And it is what it is. Some people are very strong on one side of the coin and sometimes they're stronger on the opposite side. So it's not saying one person is better than the other. It's just certain people have certain strengths and weaknesses. It just happened to be one of my strengths. And yeah. And coming back from that, even I felt yucky because I was immersed in that energy. And uh, it's not something I'd even wish on my enemies because of the negative things that were done to them and what they had to do to survive there as they're being held captive wasn't pretty. And I've seen this happen to other people and it's like... <sighs> I don't want to go too much into the description again because it's very uh, rated R. And yeah, so it's like I've seen this happen to other people and I've had to rescue them and they were in similar situations, just, you know, not exactly. And it's like some of these really negative entities, they have patterns on what they do to attack other people or like when they hold them captive of the things they make them do, I'm noticing some patterns and yeah, it's screwed up, but it's very interesting in terms of 
If you're somebody who likes to learn about entities and their habits and what they do, it helps you understand them, which then helps you combat them in really screwed up situations like this. And so I'm just saying that, yes, it was screwed up, but I learned a lot from that experience. And yeah, I mean, and even though like I was in a hotel that was a good 20 minutes away from the area, because I was immersed in that energy and looking and taking pictures, there's energy cords. And so they kind of stick with you And that's why this stuff can happen. And I did a lot of looking around and just, you know, taking pictures. Because when's the next time I'm going to be able to go to the occult museum and look at some of these items? Like, probably never. Unless I hit the lottery and can just go whenever I want. But, yeah, there were a lot of energy cords. Of course, I brought my cleansing supplies I didn't think I needed it that night, but let me tell you, the next night, I did not make the same mistake, even though we were in the hotel. But, um, yeah, when you guys go to places like this, whether it's a convention or haunted areas, always bring your cleansing tools because you should always cleanse yourself before you return back to your home because energy cords do form. Just because you don't specifically communicate or interact with these things doesn't mean that they can't follow you home. Remember, your energy, your aura still intermingles with the other energies around you. And that's how people can bring things home. Now, communicating with some of these beings, of course, will intensify those cords. But, yeah, I mean... You guys know every time I'm put in a hotel, no matter where I'm at, shit tends to happen. Um, But yeah, I wanted to share this because I thought it was interesting. It was kind of traumatizing. Just watching through other people's eyes, too, and how they reacted to the messed up situation. So, like, I felt traumatized in their place, if that makes sense, because Claire Sentient. And yeah... I'm very curious to know if they even remember. They might not because a lot of times people don't remember the astral realm experiences or dreams, especially if they're not really meant to or it's not really their strength. So, I don't know. But guys, I wanted to share this. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. I always like to respond to your messages. And guys, don't forget to give this video a like and a share and I will see you soon. So peace out Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, and Scouts all in between. But yeah, peace. Deep within the silent dark I found a flame, a tiny spark.